It's been almost 30 years since Philadelphia officer Daniel Faulkner was murdered. Mumia Abu Jamal was convicted and sentenced to death. But there has been controversy ever since, almost 30 years now. And today, a new documentary premieres. There is the director and producer of the documentary. Ty Gray Hill is in the studio with us. Good to see you, Ty Good Gray. Good morning. Nice All to right. see you. Good morning. Good morning. We'll tell you where this movie premieres tonight and show you some clips from it when we come back. I would never believe the state of Pennsylvania or Philadelphia again if he is executed on the basis of that trial. They needed a revolutionary act of violence to become powerful players in their own lives. Danny Faulkner, as he lay on that sidewalk, looking up at the barrel of that gun, saw Jamal actually implementing his political power. Based on his history, I always wondered if Mumia Bull Jamal just wanted to murder a police officer, wanted to kill a cop, and it was my husband. That is a taste of a documentary entitled The Barrel of a Gun about that night, directed by Ty Gray Hill, who sits right next to me. Ty Gray, good to see you. Good morning. So after four years of studying this and putting this documentary together, who killed Daniel Faulkner? Oh, it's clear Mumia Abu-Jamal did. And uh, what I wanted to do was uh, show a fresh perspective to this, this issue, which has been raging for 30 years. And we'll talk about that fresh perspective in a second here. <clears throat> but I'll say almost 30 years has gone by. <clears throat> Were you concerned about bringing it all back up again? Well, I, I'd seen certain things done about the case, and I didn't feel they did a good job of telling the real story. So I wasn't concerned about it. I just thought I would tackle it and see where it, all the, th the facts came out to. So after four years, let's talk about that new perspective. And I watched it last night. By the way, very good filmmaking. Um, and, and the premiere is tonight at the Miriam Theater at 7 o'clock. <clears throat> Excuse me. I take away this message, that it possibly was a premeditated killing. Is that what you're trying to get across? Well, uh, what I try to do is put certain facts and show Mumia's background, the, uh, the, the organizations he was a part of, and try to come up with a hypothesis of what possibly happened that night because we don't we don't have a Zapruder film like we have for JFK. Right. Like you know, that, of course, that caused a lot of speculation. But based on his history and based on who, who his heroes were, you, you can question or speculate that maybe it was set up. His heroes, uh, Mumia's heroes, uh, Huey Newton, Black Panthers, and w didn't Huey Newton? Uh, also commit a crime a lot like this? It's very similar. Early Even a Volkswagen Vol involved. The Volkswagen involved, four in the morning. There was another passenger, there was a, somebody else there that refused to testify like Mumia's brother. It was eerily similar to Mumia's uh, killing of Officer Falk. So, again, why would he kill this officer? Was it to would gain a little bit of recognition, become a hero in the movement? Look, I killed a cop. I, I, I speculate yes, maybe, but the, the real, Mumia's revolution had ended by the time he had done that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Panthers had imploded, move was, was pretty much done. But it might have still, still been him. The, the word was uh, that would equal justice in some weird way to kill a cop. Yeah, well, the Panthers, the symbol, the symbol of justice, they were the, 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 the protectors of capitalism, mm -hmm. and so you went after the cops to get to the capitalists. So there's, people after they watch it, they say, so maybe his brother, maybe his brother, purposely drove the wrong way down 13th Street, knowing that his brother was in the cab close by. He knew he'd be stopped by a cop and then the killing would take place. That's one theory. That's one theory. That's one theory. Now, there are a lot of celebrities in, in your film, because you get both sides of this thing. Where are they coming from? Why do they say, I, I hear a couple of them like Ed Astor say, I don't know if he's guilty or not guilty, I just know that he got a bum rap at the trial. You cover that. Yeah, I, they don't have the real facts of the case. Uh, I asked them, you know, when I was interviewing them, do they know, have they read the transcript? They said they've read parts of the transcript, but I just think they hear a, a, a story about a guy that has been unjustly imprisoned, and they just run with it without knowing the facts. And they're and they're against the death penalty. Seems and they're to against be the their, death penalty. Their main true. focus. Right. Okay. Tonight, Maureen Faulkner saw it. Yes, Maureen did see it. Uh, no. Daniel's uh, widow. <clears throat> what is the most compelling moment for her? Has she told you? Understand that she broke down when she saw it. Yes, the audio tape of the radio call from Daniel Faulkner has never been heard before, even by his widow Maureen. And when she saw the film for the first time, she heard his voice in 30 years. And that was very, very, very uh, powerful and uh, 
disturbing to her. A lot of people thought that tape right. didn't even exist, but you right. found it. Yeah, we found it. Mm -hmm. After about a year's search. Okay, tonight, Merriam Theater, ironically, what a block and a half away where he lost his life. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, near 13th and Locust. Right. Um, so again, 7 o'clock tonight, Merriam Theater. There is a charge, and the charge relates to his badge number? Yeah, it's forty-six ninety-nine, and the proceeds are going to the Daniel Faulkner educa Educational Grant Fund. Yeah. Which the money goes to the children who, who were victims, whose parents were victims of violent crime. Took four years. Uh, good job. Thank you. Good filmmaking. Thank you. Tell a good story.